So I'm gonna just wait for people to get out here before I start talking too much. So when you're in here, just let me know when you're in here and then I'll start talking. So I'll wait for more people to show up and then I'm gonna start talking because this is beyond ridiculous. I'm going to wait for a little bit more people to come. And I'm going to tell you guys the entire story. So far, the people that I've told or know who know about it can't even believe it happened. Some people feel like it's straight out of a movie scene. I'm just waiting. And as I'm waiting, I'm going to pull up stuff that you guys need to see. Okay. So basically, where do you go? All right. I go to the University of Hartford. Okay. I go to the University of Hartford. It's in Connecticut. And I'm not from here, okay? So basically, I moved in August 27th, right, this summer. And I was assigned a roommate by random. And basically, I moved out about two weeks ago. And I moved out because I felt like I was unwanted in my own room, right? But this is not even like the huge part. So I basically felt like I was unwanted in my own room. You know, like I was ignored. I acted like I was like a ghost in my own room, you know, like I was disrespected and not like physically, but like if the person was to walk into the room and see me doing work, like she'll turn off the light and just walk out and just like a whole bunch of petty, disrespectful stuff. But me, I never said anything. I don't want to start any conflict out easy, like just turn on my personal light, you know what I'm saying? But basically, um, while I've been here, I've been getting sick. Not knowing why I've been getting sick. It started with throat pain, and I thought maybe because it's cold up here, colder up here, I'm just probably catching a cold. You know what I'm saying? But usually when I catch a cold, it starts with my throat, and then I get the other, like, the actual cold. I realized I didn't get the actual cold. You know what I'm saying? And the sore throat pain got worse, and it was just throat pain. And this was, this was happening for about a month. So it got to the point where, like, three weeks in, three and a half weeks in, it got to the point where I had extreme throat pain that I couldn't sleep to the point where I couldn't speak. Like, I would try to whisper, and I could barely whisper. So I decided, let me go to the health clinic on campus because I can't let another day go by, you know what I'm saying, because it's, it's got so worse. So I went to the health clinic. They did three tests, and they gave me antibiotics, but... I got the antibiotics before I got the test back because they asked me if I want it first or do I want to wait. But I didn't want to go through another sleepless night with, with such extreme pain. So I took the antibiotic. The three tests that they did came back negative, right? Still, nobody knows what's wrong with me. All they know is that there's some type of bad bacteria in my throat causing all this pain. So a couple of days go by and I come to – I decide I don't need to move out my room because I feel unwanted, the standard third, this is not how roommates are supposed to be, blah, 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 blah. Like, it was a whole bunch of things going on. Mind you, I was really super nice with my roommate. Like, I shared my microwave, shared my fridge, fed her fish. She left every weekend, blah, 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 whatever. So I decided to go about my, like, we go look information by myself to go move out. So I found a roommate real quick, and I was going to move out. So one night... Um, I went in my room and I was taking little things one by one, just starting to move it into the new room. Um, out of nowhere, it's like I was existing for once in like 
since I moved in. My prior roommate asked me, oh, are you moving out? She paused her moving everything. I was like, yes. Like, I just said a one-worded response, yes. So she made a face, said, okay. And then I seen her texting on her phone. I assumed that she was just telling all her friends that I was moving out. Five minutes later, I go down the steps of my old building, well, about to walk out into my new building when I'm approached by my old neighbor and two RAs. My old neighbor tells me, oh, Chanel, I sent you something on the phone. You need to look at it. It's super important. Me not knowing what's going on, my hands full, I couldn't look at my phone. So she shows me on her phone herself. Apparently, this girl posted on her Instagram that something like I wasn't present on her Instagram. So other people on campus are seeing all this stuff that she's publicly posting. OK, so she posted what she's been doing ever since I moved in. And now I'm going to read you exactly like here's the paragraph. I have only the only stuff I have is what was sent to me. I don't have everything she's been posting or you know, all the videos that she posted of me because she would she would post videos of me eating saying, oh, if only she knew what she's what where her utensils been or whatever the case may be. But I'm going to read you what I was sent, what she posted five minutes before I left my room when I told her I was moving out. So here's a screenshot. It's a paragraph and I'm going to read it to you. Finally did it. Your girl got rid of her roommate after one and a half months after one and a half months of spitting in her coconut oil putting moldy clan dip in her lotions, rubbing used tampons on her backpack, putting her brush, putting her toothbrush places where the sun doesn't shine, and so much more, I can finally say goodbye to Jamaican Barbie. So this is the paragraph, right? She posts that on her Instagram. Then she starts posting pictures of what she's been doing to me, right? So she posts pictures of my Steve Madden backpack. I don't know if you can see the, the little spots, but it's tampon blood stains, right? Tampon blood stains, okay? So she has her period blood stains on my bag. I don't have the bag on me because public safety removed it because they said it was a health hazard that I've been, and the fact that I've been sleeping next to this thing. I usually keep my bag open, right, on my bed, right? See this little wooden post thing in the corner of my bed? I usually keep it hooked and then have the flap open. So the flap opens on my sheets. And I always sleep towards the bag flap where the blood is, right? I've been sleeping there for months. And the bag's been hanging there, and I wasn't using it because I I have multiple bags. You know what I'm saying? So I use different bags, and that one's just been sitting there with blood on it. Me not knowing, right, sleeping there, taking in all the nonsense. But, you know, that's just my backpack. Like, if you really go in depth. Now, here's another picture that she posted, okay? This is something that was in my fridge. Uh, my fridge that I shared with this girl that I didn't know she had shit, this type of shit in it. I'm just thinking, you know, I'm sharing the fridge with her, you know. I bought the fridge, I bought the microwave, I'm sharing my stuff with her, and I don't have a problem with it, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking it's just food. Sis posts a picture and says, like, this is moldy clam dip that I've been mis mis mixing in with her face lotions. Then she takes pictures of my mail and posts it wherever, talking shit. My thing is, I keep looking at this paragraph, right? Because the paragraph says so much stuff she done. And at the same time, she says she's done so much more. I don't know the so much more. I've been using my toothbrush for how long? She says she puts my toothbrush places the sun doesn't shine. What else? The fact that I have blood where I sleep and I didn't know. I've been using my, my coconut oil. My, my uh, Coconut oil is expensive, you know? The organic virgin coconut oils, that's what I use, right? And I don't go to no health beauty supply store. I go to um, what's it called organic stores or wholesale food stores or Trader Joe's to buy them. Them things are expensive, right? 
She's over here putting moldy clam dip in her spit and saliva and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I have a video the day after I discovered this and like had to get public safety involved and the police and file reports and things like that. I, in the process of me moving out my things, I'm discovering new things. Like I took a video of my coconut oil, right? I'm gonna show you the video. It was so hard to open the coconut oil and it smelled so bad. Let me find it. But my thing is, the, the following day after I moved all my things out, right, that night I had to sign. I was up until like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. moving things out and things like that by myself into my neighbor's room because I had to sleep in my neighbor's room before I moved into my actual new, new room because I didn't know all this stuff was going to happen. Um, I had to fill out a no contact agreement, which is basically kind of like a restraining order, but campus wise, just no contact. Like me and her can't have any contact with this, that, you know, any of that. So the following day after I moved all my stuff into my new room and the resident, the people who are in charge of the residential life on campus come to me to collect the, my old room key, right? They come to me, knock on the door, I give them the old room key, I sign it out, and it's this lady, and then there's this man. And instead of taking the old room key, signing it out, and going about their business, they say, oh, I just want to um, reassure you about the no contact agreement. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I already know, because when I signed the no contact agreement, it's like four bullets, and the lady who I signed it with, I made sure I questioned every single one of them bullets, so I don't, you know, go against it. And they're telling me, oh, well, just to let you know, the situation is over, so don't speak about it or else you can be removed from the residential side of campus. Basically saying I can't live on campus. Like that, could, that, that, that will happen if I speak about the situation and saying the situation is over. How's the situation over? The situation just started. This don't make no type of sense, right? Plus the no contact agreement, I, I went with, the, in a, with a meeting with the same lady who I signed the no contact agreement with today, today, right? This, this chick said, what it, she was confused. She basically said that my no contact agreement had nothing to do with the situation. It's just, I can't come in contact physically with the old roommate, vice versa. She can't have my phone number or social media or anything like that. There's just no contact. That has nothing to do with me speaking on the situation or the situation being over. The situation isn't over. Nothing's happening, right? And at the same time, nothing can be done, right? I can't get anything done, like, to progress in, this, in like, the whole situation because you have to wait for public safety to finish the investigation in order for this to go, like, up. You know what I'm saying? So, like, things can actually start happening, right? Um, what's it called? Why does it make, well, why it doesn't make sense? She should be exposed. What kind of madness going on with the fuck? Bruh. But yeah, nothing, nothing can happen unless public safety finishes the investigation. And then at the same time, I have like professors running me all around the place to talk to different people or to talk to them. And they're all saying the same thing, like what was happening? Like what's public safety doing about it? Like what's what's going on? Like what's what's happening? Nobody knows what's happening. You know why? Because nothing can happen until public safety finishes an investigation. And my thing is, I don't want to be stuck. I don't know. I'm not stuck. I don't want to be another statistic. You know what I'm saying? Because colleges, thing colleges, like it could be a rape situation or something serious. You know what I'm saying? Anything serious. And they just brush it under the rug. And then they just, they just leave it until the, the, the situation disappears. Like, they don't take care of it at all. And it's, like, a proven fact. You know what I'm saying? And it's the fact that I'm coming into college my freshman year, and all this shit is happening. Multiple crimes is committed in this thing. Multiple crimes was committed in this thing. And it's the fact that nothing's being done. And I'm not about to sit here and have this thing just dusted, like, blown away in the wind and nothing happens. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that 
since the fact that I'm black and my old roommate was white, right? If the roles were switched, if the roles were switched, I want to know if it would be handled the same way, right? Because I damn well know it wouldn't. I damn well know it wouldn't. This don't make no type of sense. Everybody's saying the same thing. What's happening? What's happening? I'm just sitting here. Nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? Because the school is just taking their time with this investigation. Why? I don't know. And nothing can be done unless the investigation in the school is complete. Nobody can take it and, and put it into court or anything, can do anything. Professors can't tell me anything else. They, they can't tell me anything else. Why? Because what they tell me, I'm telling them, well, I can't do anything. Do you know why? Because public safety. Or they ask me, what is public safety doing about it? They're investigating it. And I just have to sit here and deal with it. And do y'all hear the hoarseness in my voice? The fact that I had to go back and forth to New York from Connecticut to go to doctors, the fact that the health center is telling me that I need to go to an ENT and they can't even help me anymore, right? The fact that I have to go back and forth from New York to Connecticut to see doctors, right? And then I'm missing classes because I have to go back and forth doesn't make no type of sense because I'm here going back and forth seeing doctors and doctors, this, that, and the third. Meanwhile, nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. And at the same time, public safety talking about some, the same day this incident happened, public safety talking about some, oh, I might not hear anything at all. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. So that's the story. That's what happened. And I don't know what to do. I have no idea what to do. Oh, let me show you the coconut oil video. I want you to see the colors of the coconut oil. The coconut oil was green with like dots of black and it had like a like orange and it smelled disgusting. Like as soon as you took off the lid, it smelled disgusting. So she basically sent me to the hospital. What the hell? They didn't even penalize her health. That's what I want to just say. Sorry, you had to go to this. I don't know what's going on with her due to the no contact agreement. Like, my parents asked me, people asked me. I personally, I'm being honest, I don't know what's going on with her, right? But my thing is, nothing is happening here. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like she's, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. All I do know is that the investigation is not over. They're supposed to tell me when it's over and what's the next step. And I feel like nothing is happening. And at the same time, like I said, if this, if the, if the race roles was reversed, I feel like this would have gone down a different route. Like, you know what I'm saying? The school's looking. You are screaming bloody murder. They really didn't put the school on blast when I handled the situation correctly. They are lucky. They are lucky. But guess what? I'm trying to put them on blast now because the fact that I try to do this properly the way they wanted to, they wanted to go through, through public safety. Because when I found out, I wasn't. I, they didn't bring me upstairs to her. I didn't go straight to her. I would have knocked. You know what I'm saying? But they, they, they didn't. Instead, they had. They held me in a room. Um, in the lobby, one of the RA rooms in the lobbies on the complexes, and they had me um, stay there until public safety came. And then once public safety came, public safety took me to 
the public safety building where I had to meet Hartford police to fill out reports and stuff like that. And then they're going to tell me I may or may not hear anything back from public safety. Like, what? That doesn't make any sense. And all this stuff is happening. And then the next day, like, two days later, I give them more, like, evidence. I gave them the coconut oil because I found the coconut oil. And at the same time, the fact in the paragraph, she says, I quote, she says that she and so much more. She's done so much more. Like, she just listed some of the stuff to pictures of some of the stuff. She, like, I don't have everything that she posted. She posted videos of me eating, talking about some, if only she knew where those utensils been. And my thing is, I have to be cautious about what I use now because I don't know the other stuff that she messed with. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. And I don't want to just throw everything I have because then I'm going to throw some things that, I, that probably wasn't even tampered with in the first place. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. And I'm furious. And they're going to tell me some of the situation is over. How is the situation over? The situation just started. What are you talking about? And you're going to try to tell me that if I speak upon the situation, I might be, I might, I might be like removed from residential living on campus? What? But like this, this is not making no sense. This is not making any type of sense. You're not going to come to my door and threaten me about how you're going to remove me off campus for living. For for what? For for telling, like, everybody what's going on and how screwed up this whole thing is? It don't make no type of sense. My new roommate is so nice. My new roommate, my new roommate I'm getting along. I'm like getting along so nicely with my new roommate. Like we already getting along basically, but my new roommate is just I'm thanking the Lord for her right now. University of Hartford. I go to the University of Hartford. It's in Connecticut. They're looking, you're not suing, they're looking, you're not writing the newspapers and media. See, this is what, and this is what I'm about to do, because like I said, I try to do it their way, right? And it's like they're slowly trying to make me go into that statistical college nonsense with where things don't get done and, and cases don't get taken care of, you know what I'm saying? And how, how much I'm trying to press charges, right? But no, I can't press charges if these people don't finish the investigation. Nobody can do their job unless this investigation is finished. And this is why everybody's stuck and, everybody, and I'm aggravated and this, that, and the third. So the fact that I try to do it their way, but they're trying to be like a, a, a you know, a stereotypical college with college situations. I now have to take it to the public because, you know, if public knows about things, if the public knows about things, then the media gets involved. And when the media gets involved and the public gets involved, they're going to want to know, like, why isn't this being taken care of, this, that, and the third. And that's when they're going to start really doing things because now it's not, it's not a little secret within the campus anymore. Now people know. Now it's big. They're looking at this video. Oh, no, this video is crazy. I'm not here speaking. The story needs to be heard. And who said that you'd be moving? Um, Charles, the when the people came to pick up my old key, the residential people, the people in charge of residential living in the complexes, they came the night to just their job was to just come pick up the key. Just come pick up my old room key, make me sign it out and go. But instead, they came, picked up the room key, and was like, oh, I want to just um like, you know, make sure you understand the no contact agreement. Mind you, I already had a lady explain the no contact agreement with no contact agreement with me when I signed it, and it's only four little bullet points. And then I met with the same lady today, this morning, and she told me, "What are they talking about?" Because that has nothing to do with the situation. It's just I can't have any physical contact with the girl. The girl can't have any physical contact with me. The girl can't have my phone number or my social media or anything like that and vice versa. That's it. 
This is Binky. I will be there for. Oh, Binky. Sorry. This is beyond belief. There's so many charges on this thing. There's so many charges on this case. And it's ridiculous because it's like, it's just crimes going out the window and nobody's doing anything about it. And they're just like, it's a white girl. Yes, it's a white girl. That's why I'm saying if, if, if the race roles was switched, as in like, if, if this wasn't happening to a black girl, but it was happening to a white girl, by a black girl, so many things would have been done already. It's ridiculous. Just joins what happened. Are you okay? Okay. For the people who just joined, I'm going to just reread the post. But basically, I've been sick ever since I moved in on campus, and I didn't know why. I thought I was just getting a regular cold, but I realized that I wasn't getting a regular cold, and I had extreme throat pain. I went to health services on campus, get, got tests done, this, that, and the third. At the same time, I was living with um, my old roommate, who was white, and she acted like I was a ghost in the room. She didn't pay me any mind. I would be in the room, and she was type disrespectful. Like, I would be in the room doing my work, and she would just walk in, turn off the light, and leave. And, like, she would just do so much disrespectful things. But I didn't pay any mind because, you know, I just didn't want to start any trouble. I'm not, like, a conflict person. I'll just turn my own little personal light, do my own thing. You know what I'm saying? I shared my microwave with her, shared my fridge with her, fed her fish every weekend because she would always leave to go home, a whole bunch of stuff. But basically, the day I moved out, um, she didn't know about it, obviously. Like, I told her, like, like while I was packing my things, she, like, finally acknowledged me for once it's ever since we moved in this happened about two weeks ago and she asked me if I was moving out and I said yes and then she kept her moving on pause and started to text her friends I thought she was texting her friends telling her friends oh well, she's moving out blah, blah 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 I walked downstairs five minutes later with some of my stuff to move into my new room Come to find out, I have my neighbor and two RAs approaching me saying, oh, you need to look on your phone. It's something, like, important, but my hands were full. So they showed me what they sent me, and it ended up her posting things on Instagram about what she's been doing to me ever since I moved in. I'll read the thing again. I only have some of the stuff that basically what they screenshotted and sent me based on what she posted tonight. Um... And you can see the time, too, on the top. The time says 10.38 p.m. So um, it says, finally did it, your, finally did it, yo. Wait, no, finally did it. Your girl got rid of her roommate after one and a half months of spitting in her coconut oil, putting moldy clam dip in her lotions, um, rubbing used tampons on her, bath pack, on her backpack, putting her toothbrush places where the sun doesn't shine, and so much more. I can finally say goodbye to Jamaican Barbie. So after posting that paragraph, she posted pictures and stuff like, here's my Steve Madden bag. I don't know if you can see the blood stains, but there was blood stains on my Steve Madden bag. I didn't know about it. Usually, I usually hang my backpack right there where that little wood thing is by the my bed right there. I usually hang my bag and keep the flap open. And the flap is usually like laying flat against my bed. And I had the bag there for a very long time because I have multiple bags that I use. So I usually just hung that bag there, not knowing that there was blood and stuff. And I'm sleeping there and I'm in taking in all this period blood, right? Um, this was in my fridge. I didn't know. Like I said, I shared the fridge with her and stuff like that. I'm thinking it's just her food or whatever. Apparently, she says, like, this is moldy clam dick that I've been mixing in her face lotion. She would take pictures of, like, my mail and post it and try, you know, talk mad shit. Um, coconut oils was was destroyed. Like, it had a whole bunch of stuff in it. I don't know, fungus, some type of thing was growing in there, but it was disgusting. Um, I've been using the, the toothbrush and stuff like that. She messed with all my stuff. She would post videos of me eating and say, um, what's it called? If only she knew where this utensil's been. It's just a whole bunch of stuff. And at the same time, in her paragraph, she says, and so much more. So my thing is, like, I don't know the so much more part. And obviously now she's not going to announce the so much more. You know what I'm saying? But 
I'm cautious to use my things because I don't want to throw everything out, right? I th- obviously like replaced and threw out, I didn't replace everything, but I threw out the stuff that she named and the stuff that she took pictures of. I didn't throw out my Steve Madden bag or that jar of coconut oil because public safety took it because they said it was a health hazard. And I guess they have it for evidence as well. But I'm cautious to use my stuff because I don't know what was the, what she what else she tampered with versus what she didn't tamper with. And I don't want to throw out everything and, like, you know, throw out things that she probably didn't even touch. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just weird. And I'm still sick. Still going back and forth with doctors because the health services on campus said they can't even help me and they suggested I go to my doctors back in New York and it's frustrating because I have to go back and forth miss class this then and third and it's just annoying so that's what happened Carrie Ann and Brie oh, I'm gonna show you if you know you can share it like while I talk Oh my god, what the hell is this? That's fucked up. I would have killed her. You are not a girl. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Nah, she's strong. But yeah. So that's what's been happening. And since I've been trying to play their game and do things their way, obviously shit is not going on. And I, and I refuse. I refuse to become another stupid college statistics. I'm not with the shits whatsoever. I'm not with it. So that's why I have to come on here and let the public know and then try to get news, the news involved and things like that. Like now I have to get the media and stuff involved. You know what I'm saying? The public needs to know. The media needs to know. Everybody needs to know now because they're just going to dust it off or sleep it on the rug like nothing happened and try to keep this clean reputation. Like, no. So this is going on, guys. You guys have any more questions on the situation? Oh, and also the people who just joined. I can't do anything about it. Nobody can do anything about it right now because public safety has to finish an investigation. The problem is they're taking too long or they're not, I feel like they're not, finishing it quickly because professors on campus are asking me constantly what is public safety doing what is public safety doing they send me to people to talk to people about the situation i talk to people about the situation what are those people that ask me what is public safety doing i don't know why all i have to tell them is it's still under investigation we can't do anything nothing can take place nothing can happen i can't do anything until public safety finishes the investigation so yeah, sorry you went through all this. It was really sick. I really have the fact that she did that to you. No one deserves that kind of treatment. No one deserves that type of treatment. And like I said earlier, I feel like if if the roles were swapped and she, if if I was the white one and she was the black one, I would have been helped already. You know what I'm saying? A whole bunch of stuff would have went down already, or. Or if um, she was, if like if the role swapped and I did this and I did it to her, mad shit would have went down already. Like a whole bunch of stuff would have would have happened. But it's the like I feel. Oh my god, I'm just so frustrated because it's just ridiculous. It's just really ridiculous. <sighs> Please get your parents involved. My parents are involved. I've I've been told my like I told you this this happened about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. And I, like I said, we, my parents can't do anything, even if they call lawyers, they can't do anything. Why? Because investigation, public safety, the school needs to finish the investigation in order for anything to happen. And the problem is the investigation is not, the, not what's, the, what's happening with the investigation. That's the problem. The problem is it's not finished. You know what I'm saying? Lots of schools don't finish investigations or they just let it drift off and nothing happens, which is why I'm so upset. Lots of people are really upset. Lots of people are not really like damaged. Like everybody's pissed and saying this and third, how, oh, they would have done this and that to her. Well, I can't, like, there's nothing for me to do. Which is why I have to come here for the public to hear 
and then I'm like pissed. Like I'm just I'm just pissed at everything. Like I feel like the residential office has a lot of nerve coming to me trying to tell me that I could that I like if I speak upon the situation, I won't be able to live on campus anymore. Like they like what? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And even when I brought it up, when I brought that to the person who I signed the no contact agreement with, she was confused. She was just as confused as to why, like, why would they tell you that? That had nothing to do with anything. I don't know. I don't know what kind of game these people are trying to play. But I'm getting mad, impatient. And I just can't deal with it anymore. And I don't want to deal with it anymore. I just want shit to get done. <sighs> Any other questions on it? But that's like pretty much the whole story. You are so strong, please let me know if there's anything I can do to help. I will just say this because it's not acceptable. Well, the way you guys can help is because if the public gets involved, then they have to start taking things seriously. So that's why I had to come out here. So you guys can share this video and let it be known. Like, seriously, like, spread it all over the place. Because if it's known, then people will know. And then the media finds out, and then now they're in trouble, and they have to finish an investigation. And, yeah. Wait, I didn't hear what happened. Can you get a brief? Okay. All right. Okay. I'll, I'm going to say the story again because people are like, coming in and out. But basically, um, moved in on um, August 27th. Um, I had a roommate. She was white. Um, she treated me as if like I was a ghost in the room, like I was non-existent. And I kind of just let it go. You know what I'm saying? I just thought, okay, that's just her personality. You know, it was a random roommate selection. Um, I shared my microwave and fridge with her. She, she left for the home. She left home for the weekend every weekend. I always fed her fish. You know what I'm saying? Um, there was like points where she was type disrespectful. Like she, I would be doing my work in the room, and she would just come in and turn off the light and leave. But you know, I'm not a person who looks to start conflict, so I just like let it go. I would turn on my own personal light that was right behind by me, and I just kept doing whatever I was doing. So I got tired of. The treatment one day and I decided to look about getting a new roommate moving out while this is all happening um while I was in school I was getting sick and I thought just because I moved from New York to Connecticut the weather changed it's completely different it's colder and stuff like that I just thought I was gonna catch a, I was catching a cold usually when I catch a cold I, it starts with like a sore throat and then it goes into the cold but I noticed that it was just throat pains and like throat problems I was having and it got to the point where it was so severe I wasn't sleeping at night and I couldn't speak at one point and when I mean speak like I couldn't even whisper like I was struggling to whisper like I had to whisper really softly to talk so the following day I was like okay this is getting like too serious and like why that night was like so bad I had to go to health services on campus so I went I got, I did tests, I did three tests. They gave me antibiotics before the results because I was like, I don't want to go through that again. The test came back negative. They didn't know what was wrong with me. All they knew was that they had, had bad bacteria in my throat. And they didn't specifically, you know, specifically know what was going on. So fast forward a couple of days later, I finally find a new roommate and I find a new room and I start to... It's like around nighttime, like 10 p.m., late p.m., going into 11. And I'm moving little things one by one out of my closet into my new room. So the following day, you know, it's like less things for me to move out. So for once, ever since I moved in, it's like I'm acknowledged by my old roommate. And she asked me if I'm moving out. And I simply just said a one-worded response, yes. And she made a face, and she was like, oh, okay. 
and she shrugged her shoulders and she paused her movie and she started to text on her phone. I assumed that she was just telling all her friends that I'm moving out. Um, five minutes later, I head downstairs to exit my building to go into my new building. I didn't even, I reached my lobby of my car. And I'm approached by my old neighbor and two RAs. And my old neighbor's like, Chanel, I sent you something on your phone. It's very important. You need to look at it. But my hands are full. So she showed me on her phone instead. And it was a post that the old roommate posted. <clears throat> Only had what was sent to me. But she posted this on her Instagram. People on campus seen it. Um, she's been posting stuff for, on of me on her, on her Instagram for a while. Um... I obviously did not know about it. Like, I only have the pictures that she posted of five minutes, legit five, like, as I was walking, when I thought she was texting a friend, she was actually posting things. Um, oh, see the, see the time, 10.38 p.m. See the paragraph. This is just the paragraph, like, her caption. There's pictures and stuff, like, after. But the paragraph says, Finally did it. Your girl got rid of her roommate. After one and a half months of spitting in her coconut oil, putting moldy clam dip in her lotions, rubbing used tampons on her backpack, putting her toothbrush places where the sun doesn't shine, and so much more, I can finally say goodbye, Jamaican Barbie. So she posted pictures of, like, my delivery packages and talking shit about it. She posted pictures that of stuff that she had in my fridge. Now I shared a fridge with her and I shared a microwave with her. So I thought this is just her regular stuff. You know what I'm saying? I didn't pay no mind to it. But like it says, it says like this moldy clam dip I've been mixing in with her face lotions. In the in the paragraph she also mentions that she mixed it in like my body lotions and stuff like that and my coconut oil and stuff like that. But this is a picture of my Steve Madden bag. You can see, you can kind of see some of the blood stains. But I had my Steve Madden bag hanging. See where this? Where, I don't even know how to point. You see where this um wood thing is on the bed? I had the Steve Madden bag. There's like a hook on the back. I hooked it up, and then I had the flap open. So when I had the flap open, the flap actually reached the top of my mattress, cause the the wood is kind of thick, so it's not like the hook would f fall down on the wood. So as the bag would lay flat on my mattress, you know, I didn't pay it any mind. I have a bunch of bags, so I usually just keep that bag, like, on the corner. And in my old room, I used to have my desk in front of my bed. You know what I'm saying? So basically, I was sleeping with period blood in my face for a month and change and had no idea. I've been using a toothbrush that has been put places where the sun doesn't shine. I've been rubbing things all over my skin, all over my face. The coconut oil, coconut oil I use all over my body, right down to my lips. So it enter my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Um what else? Um and then the so much more part. The so much more part kind of like it's, it makes me cautious now when I'm using my things. Because like I don't know what she tampered with and what she don't tam what she didn't tamper with. And I don't want to throw away everything and then like waste like the stuff that's probably wasn't tampered with. You know what I'm saying? But she would post video what I don't have is like the videos in the older posts because this is just what was sent to my neighbor to send to me. You know what I'm saying? Of what she just posted while I was in the room on my way downstairs. Um she would post videos of me eating, talking about if only she knew where those utensils been. I had a set of utensils so I don't have to repent, like, keep buying plastic, you know, plastic spoons and forks and stuff when I would eat in my room. And I usually would wash it and I would have a cup and I would put it in the, in my shelf, the bottom shelf over there. That's where I would usually have it. So you would see all my utensils just there and it's already clean. So usually when I was about to eat, I would just pop it out and eat, you know what I'm saying, and then wash it and then put it back in the cup. So she's been messing with that, but that's not, that's not what she mentioned in the paragraph. But that falls under the so much more cat part, you know what I'm saying? It's just so much going on. I'm getting a phone call. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's what happened. 
Oh, they just, they just wanted to go away. Get everything in writing, continually stay in school. I know they wanted to go away, which is why I'm saying lots of colleges do that. Like, it could be, like, it doesn't have to be my situation. It could be multiple situations, whether it's rape or other things like that serious. They don't take it seriously. You know what I'm saying? They just brush it off or, like, throw it under the rug or something. And it's like things don't get done. Like, justice doesn't get served, this, that, and the third. I've never been so sick in my life. And it's like, I refuse to become another statistic like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to fall under that category. And then you have the, the following day, um, the people in charge of the residential living on campus come to my door. It was a man and a lady. They're both white. And I have to mention color because I have to. And they come knocking on my door. And they came for my old room key, right? So, of course, like, I understand, you came for the old room key. Like, I'm supposed to give it back to you. So I give them back the old room key. I sign it out. And then they bring up the no contact agreement. Now, I had to sign a no contact agreement that night when I, went, when I met with police and, like, filled out um, public safety reports and things like that. So I had to fill out a no, me and her had to fill out a no contact agreement. So like she can't come in contact with me. I can't come in contact with her. She can't have me on social media or can't have my phone number or anything like that, vice versa. So that's the no contact agreement. It's really simple, straight to the point. You know what I'm saying? So they come to my door and they, after they, I give them the key and sign out the old room key. They're like, oh, um, I just want to like reassure you of the no contact agreement. I'm like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. So then they're like, oh, if you, like, they, first of all, they tell me the situation is over. That, that's the first thing they say. They say, well, the situation is over. So they're like, if, if I'm caught talking about the situation or anything like that, that I can be removed off, like, living on campus. So I brought that today, today, around 1 something, right, 1, 1 something p.m., I went to the same lady I signed the no contact agreement with, and I told her what they told me about some, I can be removed off campus, for, like not living, living wise, like read the residential side, if I speak upon, and they speak upon the thing, and then say, they're saying how old the situation is over. So they're like, the, the lady was like, that, that doesn't make any sense. She was confused. And she said that the no contact agreement had nothing to do with it. So I'm just upset. And at the same time, I'm frustrated in so many ways. And then I have professors asking me to, like, talking to me and things like that and sending me to multiple people to talk to. And everybody's saying the same thing, like, oh, what's public safety doing about it? And then it's like public safety's still investigating. And nothing can happen. Like, you guys are saying, oh, report this to press charges. Is that there? You think I want to do that? Like, that's why I had the police involved. But nothing can happen or nothing can take place unless public safety finishes the investigation. what school do you go to? What's the girl's name? Because something has to be done. I go to univer I go to the University of Hartford in Connecticut. Did you do anything? You went to the police. I already went to the police that night. I went to the police. That's what I'm saying. I'm not playing any games. Chelsea or even I talked to the. You don't understand, guys. I've talked to so many people. I've talked to so many people, and public safety told me how I might not even hear on the same night. Public so public, the same night, public safety told me I may not even hear anything back regarding the situation. I may or may not even hear anything. There's so many like criminal charges in what she did based on just what she posted. Nothing happens. Is it? If it's you as women, if every man would have the right to take this in the middle where you will be satisfied. You live in Hartford, I live in Springfield, and I can see why this is happening. I, I, I just go to school in Hartford. I don't even live here. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even from here. So it's like, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating.
the same way you find these white supremacists, she's bitch, we can do the same thing. This is ridiculous. I'm looking for two different men. This is why this thing needs to go viral because I don't know what else to do. It's like I'm playing the game they want me to play. I'm doing it their way, but at the same time, I don't see anything being done. I don't see anything being done. Like everybody's and everybody I'm talking to, they keep sending me again an email saying, "Come talk to me. Come talk to me." This, that, and the third. I'm going back and forth to New York to hear for doctors. This, that, and the third because the health service is telling me they can't help me, and they 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 recommend I go see my doctors in New York. Right? It's just ridiculous. They're trying to silence me. You can. I'm not letting them silence me because because the I'm not letting them silence me. One because the whole statistic, the whole statistic, the whole statistic thing that I mentioned, and the same time. If, if the roles were reversed, if the roles were reversed and I, the black one, did this to the white one, it would have been a different story. I probably would have been locked up or everything. Like, you don't understand. That's what This is what's aggravating me. This is what's really aggravating me because if the roles were swapped, if the roles were swapped, this would have been a different, this would have been a different thing. This would have been a different thing. Some fire that is hazardous. I guess I'll tell you why I'm not trying to do the new job. And y'all are saying like go to public safety or go to the police. This, that, and the third. Talk to the RAs. Talk to this person. Not to thought. Talk to that person. I did all of that already. The first night, mind you, I told you the time. The time in the post is ten. It says ten thirty. 10 30 8 p.m that's when she posted the pictures and they came to me as i walked downstairs so like five minutes after they came to me and showed me the pictures public safety they got public safety around 11 p.m that's when public safety showed up right i i i met with the police around two in the morning i i moved everything out my room into my neighbor's room um finished moving everything out around 4 a.m i did not go to bed until 4 a.m 4 or 5 a.m right and then the the as i woke up that day i woke up around like 10 went to my classes or whatever and then i had help moving my things out completely into this room which is in a completely different building right in a couple of hours with help right y'all tell that and then after that i got e multiple emails from people right to go talk to them i went to talk to them i talked to professors professors recommended me to talk to these people everybody's saying the same thing everybody's saying the same damn thing and, and i'm telling them the same damn answer and, and and we're all just sitting here waiting and let everyone share this shit what is her instagram name now I hear this the night it happened, she deleted that Instagram account. The night it happened, she deleted that whole Instagram account. I, I don't have all the screenshots. I just have the screenshots of what she posted that night, right? Like, I don't have all the, the previous posts or the previous videos that she made with me within the month. But based on what I have, she says in the paragraph that she's been doing all of this and much more for a month and change. So it's kind of like this is kind of all I need because she kind of just lets it all out. You know what I'm saying? Wait, what happened if she leaked inappropriate pics to her? Take her ass to court. Okay, Dwayne, I'm going to say the whole story just for you for the fourth time because people are coming in and out so basically i moved in on um august 27th right and i had i was randomly assigned a white roommate and uh, living with her um it was okay i guess i mean it wasn't the best um she acted like i was a complete ghost in the room um 
she was type disrespectful in like certain ways but i kind of would just ignore it because it's like i don't want to start con i don't like i'm not a conflict person so like she, like there was times that she would walk in the room and i'm doing work and she would like turn off the light and then leave and i would like just turn on my own little light whatever the case may be um what else like it's just so much and i, I like i was so nice there like i would i would share my fridge with her my microwave i would feed her fish every weekend because she always loved to go home because she lived in the state i don't know I never know I knew what was going on. Like when she would bring her friends in the room, like sometimes her, her some of her friends would acknowledge me and she would just completely ignore me like I wasn't there. But point is, um, I've been sick since I got here. I've been going to health services, not knowing what's going on with me. They don't know what's going on. They're doing tests. I'm I'm spending my own money. That I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm spent this the health center on campus is not free. In fact, they're expensive. And I'm spending my own little pocket money that my parents give me for food and groceries, right? Spending my own little pocket money getting tests and antibiotics done here just for them to come negative. These people not to know what's going on. All they know is that there's bad bacteria in my throat and they don't know what's going on with me, right? Um, to find out, like, later on, like, she's kind of, like, the reason. And... I decided to move out, but this is before I found out that she's the reason. So I decided that the treatment that I was getting in my room, I felt unwanted. I decided to leave and get a new roommate. So um, I went through the process of finding a new roommate, and I found a new roommate. And when I got the key to my new room that night, one night I was starting to move things out of my closet little by little. And for once, I was finally acknowledged by my roommate and she asked me am I moving out and I said yes so she paused her movie and she got on her phone and she started texting I assumed that she was just texting um all her friends saying that oh she's moving out blah 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 so as I went downstairs to exit my my building I got to the lobby didn't even leave my building yet and I was approached by my old neighbor and my um, two RAs so my old neighbor was like oh Chanel I sent something to your phone it's very important you need to look at it but my hands were full so she showed me on her phone and she showed me I thought my roommate was texting friends but instead she was posting things so I'm gonna show y'all the posts you see the time 10 38 p.m. and it's a paragraph and then there's like pictures the only thing I don't have is like old posts that she made on the page of me and like videos and stuff like that I just have what was sent to me so it says, finally, I did it. Your girl got rid of her roommate. After one and a half months of spitting in her coconut oil, putting moldy clam dip in her lotions, rubbing used tampons on her backpack, putting her toothbrush places where the sun doesn't shine, and so much more, I could finally say goodbye to Jamaican Barbie. So she would take pictures of my packages and talk shit and post it on her page. This is a picture of something that was in my fridge. Like I said, I shared my fridge with her, so I'm thinking it's just her food stuff or whatever. But she wrote, like, this is moldy clam dip that I've been mixing in with her face lotion. She also mixed that clam dip I discovered with, like, I don't know what else she mixed. Like, she mixed clam dip in, like, my one of my coconut oil jars and some other stuff. Because when I opened it, this is, like, two days after all this happened and, like, public safety to, like, the hazardous stuff. I gave it in after for more in like investigation and evidence or whatever. But it was nasty. Um, this is my Steve Madden bag with blood on it. Now with my Steve Madden bag, I always kept my Steve Madden bag hung up on this wooden thing. Where is it? This wooden thing right here. Right? I always kept it hung on my bed corner. Now since this like a big block of wood it wouldn't fall so it would when i had the i always had the flap open because at the time i had my desk back there in my old room so the flap would always stay open it would be on top of the mattress flat on my bed i've been sleeping and inhaling and taking in and laying down on period blood for a month and change and i did not know i did not know i've been using my toothbrush my face lotions, my coconut oil. I use coconut oil everywhere with my face lotions and body lotions and even on my lips so it goes in my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then there's so much more part. I don't even know, like, what else she did. And I'm kind of, like, spectacle when it comes to using my things because I don't want to throw everything because, you know, she costs money. But 
um, I'm really cautious at the same time because I'm like scared to use certain things because like I don't know if she tampered with it or not. And like I said, I don't want to throw away everything and then throw away something that she might have not even tampered with at all. But she posted all this. She's been doing all this crap since I got here. So proud and shit. When I, when she found out like public safety and shit was getting involved, like when I found out, she deleted the whole page thinking she can like cover up everything. But that's what happened. And then things are not being get done with the school because nobody can do anything unless public safety finishes the investigation. And they're taking forever because professors, I got emails the following day, right? I, and everybody's saying, did you talk to your RA? Did you talk to public safety? Did you do this? Did you do that? Did you call the police? This, that, and the third? Listen, guys, like you've seen the time that she posted at 10.38 p.m. Public safety came around 11 p.m. I didn't go back to the room because they, they had me wait in the room until public safety came. I filled out a statement report, right? I filled out a report. Public safety then brought me to the public safety building where I met Hartford police to fill out another report. And then um, somebody from residential whatever came with a no contact agreement that I had to sign, which basically says like, I can have contact with her. She can have contact with me. She can have my number, my social media stuff, anything like that, you know, simple. So I went back to my room around three in the morning and I had to move everything out of my room and I moved it into my neighbor's room because my neighbor at the time had a single, right? So she was in there by herself. So I crashed there and I moved everything out. I didn't go to sleep around four or five in the morning. And then, and then once I woke up, went to classes that same day, I dragged everything out of my neighbor's room with help to my new room, which is this room. And that night, um, two people from res, from res, from the res life, or whatever, came knocking on my door. It was a lady and a man, a white lady and a white man. I'm saying these colors because I feel like race plays a big part in this whole thing. Um, came to my door and they needed the res, my old room key. Obviously, I understand they need the old room key. So I'm giving them the new room key. I signed it out. But then they're like, oh, before they left, they were like, oh, I just want to um, ensure that you know the... Um, the no no contact you know like the no contact agreement they wanted to make sure i knew about the no contact agreement and like you know the rules and i'm like yeah i know because like i asked the lady the questions for everything i was signing like it's just four little bullet points like i knew what i was doing you know what i'm saying so then they're like oh if you they first they first they said the situation is over in my head i'm like the situation is over what do you the situation just started so they're like the situation is over and how I'm not supposed to speak about the situation and if I do I could be removed from the residential part of campus meaning I can't live on campus anymore one that's not what I signed that has nothing to do with the no contact agreement and I went to the lady that I signed the no contact agreement with today around 1 p.m. and she was just as confused and she was like, she was just as confused. She was like, that has nothing to do with the situation. It's just the no light contact. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm fully pissed. Can't do anything. Um, did you post it on your snap before? No, I didn't post her on anything. I didn't have this chick on anything. Um, oh, snap. I can't see some of the comments. Stories you experienced this. Have you considered transferring? Yes, I've considered transferring. I gotta fill out applications for next year since the fall semester, not fall, spring semester applications. Some of them are um, the due date is gone. I'm so sorry to stay here. That was her Instagram. She deleted that Instagram account that she was posting my stuff on. And then I don't have her, her current one because of the no contact agreement. I don't know you, but you better go a little bit. Take legal action. I tried to take legal action against her, right? 
and everybody's saying the same thing, how they can't do anything unless public safety finishes the investigation. And I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to become another friggin' statistic where colleges, like the students tell them about all these, these crimes that's happened to them, whether it's rape or other crimes that's going on. And they just sweep it under the rug and just try to keep it a secret or don't do anything about it, you know, until it just disappears. And I'm not trying to make that happen because like I said, if the, if the roles were swapped, and I did this to her as the black one in this whole thing. So this is kind of like a black versus, it is a black versus white case, right? Me being the black one, I probably would have been locked up already. I would have been charged. I would have been, like, it's just so much. It would have been, it would have played out so differently. It would have played out so differently. And it's ridiculous. She met them because she did post an entire, she did post an entire confessional, which is why I'm like, if she posted a entire confessional, what, what, what's, what's going on with this investigation? <laughs> I don't know how there's still an investigation. There's proof right there. No way. And there's so many criminal charges in what she posted. I don't understand what is what 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 what's taking so long with this investigation. What is there to investigate? I'm so happy to have this happening. I'm disgusting. That's so true. That's proof enough. What's her name? What's her Instagram? Yo, I'm I'm so sorry this happened to you. I'm happy to see this listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, to go to the thing out and get new things laid by the same as her health controls. She was going to say this was she was going to say this was she was going to say this is the University of Hartford. The University of Hartford. You would think a damn private school will have your back. You're paying all this damn money for protection and shit like that and everything. And it's just like, what the hell? Like, what? Take this to the news, please. I was told that, and, my, and this is why I had to come on here, right? Because I try to play their game. I try to do it their way, right? And nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. So it's the fact that I have to now take it to the public and then from the public try to take it to the media. So this whole thing blows up because this is just ridiculous. I know the school doesn't want bad publicity. That's why they're trying to silence you. And it's getting me tight. It's pissing me off OD because of the fact that, yes, the school doesn't want bad publicity this, that, and the third, but I'm affected OD like I could have died. She doesn't know what I'm allergic to. I, all these criminal charges against her, whether it's health or anything like that, she went through my things, like my private, like she she ruined my Steve Madden bag, yo. You know how long I had that? My dad gave that joint to me, you know what I'm saying? Like she ruined so much shit and it's ridiculous. Like do you know how much organic and coconut oil costs? Them shit's just not cheap. Them things is not cheap. Like, so many things I had to replace on my own. Medical bills. The, the damn doctor on campus is not cheap. That, that, that thing is not cheap at all. This ain't, this is not high school. Like, it's a nervous office, a nurse clinic. No, you got to pay bread. And it's expensive. And I had three tests done. And I had to pay for them. I had to pay for antibiotics. I had no use to be whatsoever. Like, this is ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. There's so much crimes on it. And it's like... What are you doing? I'm trying to take this thing to court. You know what I'm saying? Like, and nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Everybody's saying the same thing. Nobody can move. Nothing can be done until they finish this investigation. And is it being finished? No. Nobody's hearing nothing. The, the professors are asking me, oh, what's the update? What's the update? There's no update. There's no update because nothing's happening. I'm busy going back and forth from New York, missing classes to go to doctors and go to hospitals to get CAT scans and things like that to see what the hell is going on so they can try to fix whatever is wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? Nothing's happening. I'm not getting then public safety told me before how I might not even hear anything. I might not even hear not a word. And once they told me that night how I might not hear a word, that's when this whole statistic thing came in my head. Like this is not gonna happen to me. I'm not letting this happen to me. Especially since this is a black versus white case. Are you dumb? This this is not happening. Like I'm not letting it happen. This is ridiculous. 
Does your school have a website or something we can close complaints to? I have no idea if they have like a section on the site where they can complain. <sighs> Say, don't even drop this shit. Keep pressing them. Do you? Parents did get involved, right? Parents did get involved and try to call people to see what's going on. But like I said, it all goes back to nobody can do anything. Warriors can't pick up anything. Things can't go to court. Nothing can happen until public safety finishes the investigation. Is there any way you can help an arm hand? The fact that it's a private school and got no black. Okay, you said how wait, how how can we help on your end? So I have to come on Facebook because when the public knows about certain issues, that's when it gets, you know, that's when it gets the hype, that's when attention gets drawn, and that's when the media finds out. And then once the media and the public finds out, everybody's gonna want answers, everybody's gonna want justice to be served, this, that, and the third, and then they're gonna have no choice but to do what they were supposed to do in the beginning and then they're gonna look bad if you went to the news yourself that would not be against their policy because there is no policy there is no policy start over i just got here damn what happened organic oh, shits are expensive oh this is not really possible this is viable they have, they have all the videos, they just say, no, what I missed. Okay. This is going to be like the, the what, the fifth or sixth time I'm saying the story? Okay. So, I moved to, I moved in on campus um, August 27th, right, of this year. Um, I w was randomly selected a roommate. She's white. And she's from the state, Connecticut. I, I attend the University of Hartford, the University of Hartford, okay? Um, I realized that while living with my old roommate, I was basically being ignored. She would treat me like a ghost. I've kind of felt unwanted. And then like there was sort of like disrespect going on kind of, but I kind of like just shook it off because it's like, I, didn't, I don't know, I don't like conflict, you know, so. I just let it go like it's it'll be like really simple disrespectful things like her coming into the room and then like turning off the light when she sees me doing work and just leaving or stuff like that but i would just turn on my own personal light and just keep her going you know what i'm saying i shared a fridge with her i shared a microwave with her my own personal i would feed my own i would feed her fish every time she left she would leave every weekend you know i was really nice you know what i'm saying um i got to a point where i felt like I shouldn't be living like this at all. And I went about looking for a new roommate so I could move out. So I didn't let her know about this. So at the same time, since I moved to the University of Hartford, I've been sick. I thought it's because since I lived in New York and I I came to school in Connecticut, the whole major weather difference, I thought maybe that's why I was getting sick. And usually when I'm starting to get sick and catch a cold or something like that, it starts in my with a, with a sore throat and then it goes into the whole like, coughing, sneezing, blow nose, blah, 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 you know, the whole cold thing. So basically, um, I've been spending money in health services, trying to figure out what's going on with me, and they're very, they're expensive. They're expensive. I'm using my own little pocket money that my parents are giving to me, right? I, had, I, I don't have a job here because I left my own home place with my own job. So I'm out here on my own, parents sending little money here and there for like food and like groceries and stuff like that, you know? So I'm spending my own little money that I have on tests that they have to do in antibiotics, right? Just to find out that the tests come back negative, antibiotics didn't work, they don't know what's going on, all they know is that I got, I got some bad bacteria in my throat, but they don't know like what's going on, you know, specifically what's wrong with me. So fast forward, um, fast forward, I found my new room and I started to, I got my new room key and I started to move out my things. So as I'm moving out my things, I finally get acknowledged from my old roommate. She seemed that she noticed like I was taking things out of my closet. So she asked me, oh, are you moving out? And I said, yes. And she looked at me. She made a face. 
She said, okay, shrugged her shoulders. She, her movie was still paused, and I seen her just on the phone. So I assumed that she was just texting her friends, telling all her friends that I was moving out. So I proceeded to go downstairs to exit my building to go into the next building where my new room was to put in my things. Before I exited my, my building, as I got to my lobby, I was approached by my old neighbor and two RAs. So my old neighbor was like, Chanel, I sent something to your phone. It's very important. Um, you need to look at it. But my hands were full. So she just, um, what's it called? She just showed me on her phone. So basically, when I thought my old roommate was sending, sending texts to her friends, she was actually making a post on Instagram. So I have what was sent to me. I don't have the previous post that she's made, like days before or within the month. I just have what was posted that night. So you see the time, 10.38 p.m. You see the paragraph. There's, there's pictures. This is what I have, all right? So I'm going to read the paragraph. The paragraph says, finally did it your girl got rid of her roommate after one and a half months of spitting in her coconut oil putting moldy clam dip in her in her lotions rubbing used tampons on her backpack putting her toothbrush places where the sun doesn't shine and so much more i can finally say goodbye to jamaican barbie so she posted pictures of like my um packages talk shit or whatever while taking pictures and posting my packages. This was in my fridge. Now I, like I said, I shared my fridge with her. So I'm just thinking that's like her food or whatever. Like I don't pay any attention to her stuff that was in my fridge. You know what I'm saying? Because I was sharing with her, you know what I'm saying? It's not mine, I don't pay attention to it. So this, she she posted this and she says like this moldy clam dip that I've been mixing in with her face lotion. And she didn't just put that in her my face lotion. I discovered that she put it in other stuff. Um, here's period blood on my Steve Madden bag. I don't know if you can see the spots all over, but with the Steve Madden bag now, you see this little wood thing? Where is it? I'm not figuring. You see this wood thing by the bed? This right here? It's not skinny. It's like a thick block, right? So I always had my bag hung on it and the flap always open because I have multiple bags. So like, like this for like this bag right here, like I use that bag like when I'm going to class. And I usually have like all my books and stuff in the, in the Steve Madden bag that was hung by my bed. The flap was usually open. The flap, like since the, the, the pole, when it slide down, when it was on the pole, the flap usually laid flat on my bed. So I usually don't carry that bag to classes, right? Usually carry other bags and just like swap my books whenever I need to go back and forth. So the fact that I've been sleeping for a month and change and inhaling and taking in and laying on period blood, period blood for a month and change and I had no idea the fact that I've been rubbing all my coconut oils and lotions and faces and my face lotions. And I do use coconut oil like on my face sometimes too, even on my lips. Right, so all that bacteria and the bacteria from my toothbrush, I don't know where she where she put like my toothbrush and stuff like that, based on what she said, where the sun doesn't shine, like the sun can't shine a lot of places, you know what I'm saying? But all this stuff, and then in the paragraph she mentioned so much more. I don't know what else she did with the rest of my stuff. I know based on what I was told, there was a video posted two days prior to her posting that of me eating my food. And saying, if only she knew where those utensils been. Now, when I, I used to have a bowl, not a bowl, a cup of my utensils. I never bought, I, I usually have like hard silverware. I never, I don't, I don't want to buy plastic forks and like keep buying them. So I always kept a set, a set of silverware in a cup, clean. I would wash it and then drop it in the cup. And whatever I need to eat in my room, just pop it out and eat it. And then wash it and dump it back in the cup. Now I don't do that anymore. But. My point is, she messed with a lot of my stuff. Some of the things, I don't know what else she messed with. And I'm really hesitant, like, nowadays to use some of my things. Like, the stuff that she, like, mentioned in the paragraph specifically and in the pictures I got rid of. I currently don't have the Steve Madden bag and one of my coconut oils because, one of my coconut oils because 
um, health services to hazard, some health hazard violation or whatever the case may be. So they have that in their possession. But I'm really hesitant to use certain things in my I don't want to throw away like everything because I don't know if she, if like certain things I'm just throwing away. It's not tampered with, but I don't know that. And it's like, I don't know. It's like stuff that you wouldn't even know or like notice was tampered with. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But I took a video of, here's the coconut oil. The coconut oil, it was like green. It had black spots. Wait. It had black spots. It had orange patches. As soon as you opened the jar, it smelled. It was, it was really gross. But that the night when I found out, obviously they held me until public safety came. I filled out a statement. I had told them I wanted to get the police involved. So they called the police. They took me to the public safety building where the Hartford police met me there. I filled out another um, statement. Um, then at the same time, um, a lady from the school's res life or whatever, residential life, came with a no contact agreement. The no contact agreement is basically like she, she, no, no physical contact, like we can't be in the same area together, or she can have my phone number or my social media or anything like that. No type of contact to contact me, vice versa. So that's what happened that night. And then I got back to my room about three in the morning and I had to move everything out into my neighbor's room because she was currently in a single. So I slept there, moved everything out. I went to bed around five in the morning. And then the next, the, like as I woke up, I got everything moved out into the next building into, into this room. So that night, as I'm like tidying up everything in this room, you know, making it look neat because I have everything in here. It was kind of just all over the place. The um, two different people, not the same person that I signed the no contact agreement with, two different people from the res life came to my this door, knocked, you know, they were coming for my old room key, which I understand, you know, because you need the old room key. I don't need that anymore. And as they took the old room key and I signed it out, they're like, oh, I just want to, um, um, what's it called, like, reassure you about, talk to you about the no contact agreement. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know already. Like, yeah, because, like, when I was signing no contact agreement, I had, like, four little bullets, which is what I just told you. And the girl just told me, like, yeah, like, I asked questions, you know what I'm saying, to make sure, like, I knew exactly what I was doing, whatever that I was signing. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, basically, their exact words was the situation is over. They told me the situation was over and how I'm not to speak of the situation to anybody, whatever the case may be. And now if I do, if, if I do, I could be removed off the residential side of campus, meaning I can't live here on campus anymore. In my head, I'm like, that's not what I signed. That's not what I signed. You know what I'm saying? So they finally left my door with that nonsense. And today, around um, one something, I went to the same lady that I signed the no contact agreement around 3 a.m. And I told her what they said. And she was confused. And she was like, well, that the no, she was like, first of all, the no contact agreement has nothing to do with the whole situation. And she was just confused about the whole thing because she doesn't see how I would be, like, removed from living here on campus. That didn't make any sense. And this whole thing is annoying and aggravating because I'm sitting here. Everybody says I'm so calm about the situation. I'm not calm about the situation. I may look calm about the situation, but I'm really frustrated. I'm really frustrated because it's, cause it's like I'm going back and forth with my doctors from New York because health services recommended me to go to my doctors in New York because they can't help me. I'm going back and forth with them, and I'm missing classes because the doctor's offices are not open on the weekends. You know what I'm saying? I'm missing classes. I just got back from the doctors, and I just came back. Not today, but like Monday. I was gone Thursday. I had an appointment Thursday. I had an appointment Saturday. Came back Sunday night. Parents dropped me back. And then I have another appointment on the 10th. And I had prior appointments too. But the thing is, I'm frustrated because, I don't know. 
I don't know, because nothing is getting done. Nothing's getting done. Professors are talking to me about the situation, like, oh, I'm here if you need to talk, this, that, and the third. They're, they're sending me to people to talk to people, and everybody's saying the same thing, like, oh, what's public safety doing? Or what's happening? Public safety's been trying, they're supposed to be finished, they're doing the investigation. And it's like, people are like, oh, why didn't you call the police? Or did, does your parents know this, that, and the third? You need to sue, you need to press charges, this, that, and the third. And I'm saying, well, I was doing that from the jump the first day I found out. But nobody can do anything until public safety finishes the investigation. And I'm set because I feel like this is going to be like another college case, like statistic-wise, like where they just brush it under the rug and like just make it disappear. They try to silence you or try to threaten you or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's ridiculous. And at the same time, I feel like me as a black person, and her being a white person. I feel like if if the roles were swapped and I'm the one who committed all these crimes, I feel like this would have been treated, this would have been, this would have like, this would have been completely different. This would have been completely different. Okay, I this is a simple disrespect. Oh my God, the comments are moving so fast. Yes, we want to keep sharing. We want to share this. Why are you wait here? Wow, that's crazy. I missed it. Why did this girl dislike you? Just turn it over here, brother. Why did she do that? Why did you reach out to you? So not understanding what happened because she was weird. Oh, shit. The comments are moving fast. But I don't... Y'all... Hold on. Let me get, let me get the charger. My, my laptop is on 5%. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, I don't know. Y'all are asking, like, why did she do this? Or why does she, she doesn't like me? And like I said in the beginning, I don't know. I wish I had those answers. But I don't know. because, And I made sure to tell you guys, like, I shared my, I shared my microwave with her. I shared my fridge with her. And she would use my microwave more than me. I probably just started using my microwave um, like in October, like in the beginning of October because like for the whole month of September, I didn't really like, like I had stuff like to make, but I didn't have like the stuff to make it. So like, you know, simple stuff like noodles, I didn't have like water to heat up or anything like that to put in the kettle or anything. So it's like after like I came home and then brought stuff up, or like I had people come visit me and bring things for me. That's when I started using my microwave and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? That's when I actually started using my things. But she's used it. She's used it like more than me. So it's like I shared with her openly. Like I said, every she she lives in Connecticut, so she would go home every weekend, and I would always feed her fish. I don't I don't understand why. Which is why I feel like it's a whole racial slash hate issue, but at the same time, it's so much crimes that was committed that she openly posted. I did not, and the fact that that's just the post that was posted that night, which was 10 minutes before I walked down the steps, you know what I'm saying? There was more posts on that page of me that I didn't know of, and there's still things like she mentioned, she says it clearly in the paragraph and so much more. There's more stuff she's done. There's more stuff that she posted that she's done. And I will never know. I will never know these other things. And I don't understand. So girl to live I'm just gonna say. What did I do with that position? She has to say something. Yeah, okay. Oops, she has to do jail. 
saying. If if the roles were swapped, I would have been locked up already. Like they would have had no hesitation, cuff me and take me away and shit like that. And I'm just so aggravated. I'm just so aggravated. Press charges on this life. I'm trying to press charges. That night when public safety came, they called the police because I said I want to press charges. I want to call the police. But there's no pressing charges getting in the courts, nothing. Lawyers can't pick anything up until the school finishes the investigation. And and everybody wants to know what's taking them so long. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing's being done. It's just why I feel like I'm about to be another damn statistic when it comes to these college situations and crime because they just try and keep their record clean and just sweep it under the thing like nothing happened and just let it disappear. Y'all want screenshots? <clears throat> if y'all want, y'all can screenshot what I have. This is all that I have. You, and I feel like, I don't know if y'all want, like, the the three little pictures that I have, like her going through, like, my packages and talking shit about it, or, like, the blood, or I don't know if you can screenshot the video, like, the coconut oil, but I feel like her saying it herself is enough, like, I'm going to leave it here for a while so y'all can screenshot it. Okay, let me know if you want, to put it, want me to put it back up. But it's the fact that I didn't know all of this was happening. And it's the fact that she's been posting it on her Instagram. And other people on campus has seen it before me. And they've seen older posts within the month and I didn't know anything about it until my neighbor's friend because my neighbor recently introduced me to that friend like three days before this was sent to me so I guess like my neighbor didn't realize me or whatever the case may be and then through the video that she sent because she would take videos of me eating in my room and saying oh when she knew where these utensils been this that and the third blah 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 I don't know but if only I knew, I, w I just wanna know everything else. Like I wanna know there's so much more she done. I wanna know all the posts. I'm just, I'm just, I don't know. I keep pushing the issue, contact your parents. Everybody's saying contact your parents, get a lawyer. We done, I keep telling y'all, and this is why I'm so frustrated. Y'all don't understand. You guys keep saying, tell your parents, get a lawyer. Call the police. Do this. Do that. Talk to your RA. Talk to this person. Talk to that person. I did all of that already. That's the first thing I did. I told everybody. I told my parents. Parents called lawyers. At this, that, and the third. Everybody tried everything that you guys are saying. I've already done. And you know what everybody is saying? They can't do anything until public safety, the school, finishes the damn investigation. Nothing can happen until the investigation is complete. Then things can skyrocket and take off from there. But until the investigation is finished, nothing can happen. No matter how many crimes are committed, no matter how I may be affected, no, no matter how many times I have to go back and forth to miss these damn classes that I'm paying for to go to go see doctors, you know what I'm saying? No matter how many medical records I send to the officers, right, that's on the case, no, no matter how much more evidence I pull out of my room and give it to public safety to, to add to their evidence section, the, nothing, wh wh I don't understand. You have pictures of this chick clearly admitting it. Right, I I had no idea. She's been admitting, admitting it on social media. She deletes her whole her whole Instagram page, but people still have the screenshots because people seen it before me. People been seeing what's been happening to me. I didn't know until somebody recognized me and told the person who they know in contact of me to show me what's going on. I don't, I don't understand what y'all want me to do, which is why I had to come on here publicly so the public can know, so media can find out, so shit can start happening because they just like to keep people quiet and if I was white, this would not be happening. Or if I was a black one who did this to her, it would, this, everything would be like cold going completely different.
Put that picture back up again real quick. Okay. Here's the post. I mean, this is the most important one, like the paragraph. The pictures and stuff, like of the blood, all the all my stuff that's messed up. That doesn't like She has a personal Instagram. She has a personal Instagram. This Instagram account she took down he's saying she didn't delete her instagram i don't know that well, this is her finsta and because of no contact agreement i have no more contact with her personal one i never had contact with this finsta i didn't even know it existed so i can't really answer y'all questions i can't tell you her name because that goes against my no contact agreement You're, I'm not saying that they're trying to stop me from anything. I'm saying nothing can be done until they finish the investigation on campus. Why did she do all that? What's her Instagram? I don't know her Instagram. Um, I don't know why she did that. Everybody's saying what's going on. Girl, you worry about a damn no contact agreement. You need to be worried about a thing. I'm not worried about a no contact agreement because a no contact agreement got nothing to do about it. But when, when, when I have residential people in charge of the campus living coming on my door talking about a no contact agreement that got nothing to do with it, and then they're telling me if I speak about the situation because the situation is over, I could be removed off living off camp on campus. Like that don't make no type of sense. And then when I bring it to other people, they're like, "What are what what are they telling you?" I go to the University of Hartford in Connecticut. So yeah, y'all. She's jealous because you were pretty and she is ugly. No one pays attention to this in school. My, one of my professors said the same thing. One of my professors said the same thing. What did she do? I'm, I'm getting tired. <laughs> I'm getting tired of repeating the story. <laughs> I'm just, for y'all who just came in, I've been sleeping at Superior Blood for a month. My, my Steve Madden bags and like a whole bunch of other personal items are ruined. I'm sick. I keep going back and forth from the doctors and stuff. It's just, it's just ridiculous. This chick went through my, my, oh my gosh, I just can't. I don't know if you can read it on the bottom. It says, like this moldy clam did that I've been mi mixing in her face lotions. It's just a whole bunch of stuff, like. <sighs> Not surprising. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just sick of everybody right now. I'm sick of everything. I'm sick of the school. I'm sick of how it's going about it. I'm just sick of it all. And like I said, if I was the opposite color, this would have played out completely differently. Like so much stuff would have been done already. If you believe in God, start praying. I've got to hear about your mind. Done did that. Done did that. Just believe I got this man right next to me. I, I always pray to him every night. Like I don't play when it comes to him either. But it's the fact that I got to come to y'all. See, I don't play. Got him. But... I gotta come to y'all now because now that it needs to go viral and spread out. I don't know. But listen, I'm gonna just. I'm gonna just 
so mad. I wish I could do something interesting. Everybody's mad. Everybody's pissed. Everybody's just, when I tell you everybody's mad, I have professors, I have family, I have friends, I have so much people who's pissed, upset for me, doc doctors, like, <laughs> I had to it, Antonio. But, yeah. So that's what happened. I need you to get all y'all aware. And I'm about to end this live. So I don't have to keep repeating myself a thousand times. But I just need y'all help to get this out. So lots of people can find out. Lots of people can be aware. Um, I'm not trying to become another statistic. This is just another black versus white case. But I'm not talking black versus white statistics. I'm talking about college statistics and college crimes and things that go on within colleges that the college likes to cover up. Unless you are bound by some non-disclosure name that you can take facility with no lawyers. I don't have any non-disclosure agreement because she posted this publicly, so I'm not the only one who has all of this. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 like the last person to find out about all these posts about me. Move out. I did move out. I'm in the I'm in a new room. I'm in a new completely different room in a new building. You used that's why she's doing it. She's why you yeah. post a speech that's where you please so we can share it. I showed the screenshot on the screen so y'all can screenshot it yourself. But yeah. I'm about to get off of this so people can see. Y'all keep saying take her to court. What am I waiting for? can't take her to court without the investigation being done. Lawyers and everybody said this already. <sighs> this is you, hard stay focused on your studies, God bless you. Where am I at? Where am I being at? In a completely different state. Wait, I just got here, what happened? All right, for everybody who just got here is asking what happened, I'm about to just end the live so you can just rewatch it because I've, I explained the story about like seven times. <laughs> got to the point where I had to like just start showing the phone and not even like explaining everything from the beginning. You're driving yourself crazy. I'm not driving myself crazy. It's just that everybody says I'm just so, I've been so calm about the situation and I'm really not calm about the situation. It's just like, what do you want me to do? Like, what else is there for me to do? And I feel like this is one of my last resorts, like coming and letting the public know so it can get like views and then like the media finds out and all this other crap. Like, it just needs to be, it needs to be everywhere and blown up because this, this is just ridiculous. But I'm gonna come off. I can say I'm gonna come off, I'm not coming off. I'm gonna come off so everybody can rewatch it and share it and everybody be known like let let everybody know what is going on because it's just this is just ridiculous. um i don't know if, if y'all want me to start another live like maybe tomorrow or something but for new people who come in are still confused about certain things but yeah i'm about to get off share this spread the word let everybody know and I'm going to continue to let y'all know what the frig is going on.